Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's topic, impact of final plated finish on RF PCB performance. Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today I'm going to be talking about final plated finishes and how they can impact the RF performance of printed circuit boards. Now, as you're probably aware, most printed circuit boards are shipped from the fabricator with some kind of cover over the actual conductor, which is copper, because copper will oxidize and tarnish over time. And if that happens, there can be long-term reliability issues. So typically, the copper conductors are covered up by either solder mask or a metal that's plated to the copper, and that's the final plated finish. And the final plated finish typically affects the conductor losses of the uh, circuit, which is a portion or a component of insertion loss. So to begin with, let's take a look at uh, how insertion loss is split up into different components. Shown here is an example of uh, three different transmission line circuits that were fabricated, all on the exact same material. The material was 4350B laminate, and it's actually different thicknesses of that laminate, and these are all 50 ohm microstrip transmission lines. And some were thinner, some were using thinner materials, some were using thicker materials. And the uh, good thing about this chart here is it's actually showing you the difference between the measured results, which is the thick purple curve, and then some simulated results from a model. It's an MWI 2017 model that can be uh, downloaded from our Rogers Technology Support Hub. Anyway, that model shows you what the total losses are, and also it tells you what the different components of the total loss is going to be. And that, in this case, is dielectric losses and conductor losses. So the middle chart, we'll start with that one first, and that's showing the legend, of course. And the thick purple curve is the measured data from the circuits, insertion loss going out to 20 gigahertz. The green curve is the modeled total losses, which should match the measured, and it does pretty much, good enough for this comparison. And then you can see that the dielectric losses, the blue curve, are less than the red curve conductor losses. So for a 10 mil thick circuit using RO4350B laminate, there are more conductor losses than dielectric losses. Now if you look at the chart on the left, what you find is the conductor losses uh, increase significantly, which actually increases the overall insertion loss. And that's because that is now using the same material, but now thinner. And the thinner material is more sensitive to the thickness, and more th the, uh, the thin thickness is actually more sensitive to the conductor effects. And on the opposite side of this is the chart to the far right, which is a thicker version of this. It's still 50 ohm microstrip transmission lines, but now it's using a 30 mil thick RO4350B laminate. In this case, the red curve, the conductor losses, are no longer the dominant factor. It's actually the blue curve, dielectric losses. And dielectric losses are mostly associated with dissipation factor. So on the left, the thin circuit is basically showing you that the thinner the circuit, the more the conductor losses dominate. And that's very good to keep in mind that a thin circuit is more affected by conductor losses because the final plated finishes actually impact the conductor losses, which ultimately impact the insertion loss. There are several different reasons why the final plate of finish impacts the conductor losses and ultimately the insertion loss. Some of that's design related, uh, some of it's actually thickness. As I mentioned, a thinner circuit is more sensitive to the conductor effects than a thicker circuit. But also there is the conductivity of the metal being applied to the copper. And most of the metals used in the PCB industry for final plated finish are not as conductive as copper. And because of that, that causes an increase in the conductor losses. The table of information shown here is uh, showing the conductivity of the bulk metal that some of these metals are used as the final plated finish in the printed circuit board industry. And what's interesting here is copper is the most conductive one outside of silver. Silver is a little more conductive than copper. Uh, however, silver, the silver that's used in the printed circuit board in industry as a plated finish is actually applied very thin. It's using an immersion silver process and that silver is so thin that the benefit of the better conductivity is not realized until you get to very high frequencies where the skin depth is very thin and you're just using uh, mostly that silver. Uh, but in general, most of the plated finishes, as you see here, like nickel gold, nickel is about one quarter the conductivity of copper, so it's really going to have a lot more losses associated with nickel. Uh, not that much the gold, but mostly the nickel. So ENIG, Electrus Nickel Immersion Gold, usually is the worst case scenario for increased losses. So I'm often asked, why does final plated finishes impact insertion loss, especially in the case of microstrip? So a microstrip transmission line, as you're probably aware, it's two copper layer circuit. You have a signal plane on top, ground plane on the bottom. Most of the electric fields are between the signal plane and the ground plane. And the plated finish cannot affect those interfaces, really. The plated finish actually will affect the three edges of the signal conductor itself. 
And uh, actually, that is what's important for a final plate finish is because really at the corners there, that's where the, uh, the conductivity actually makes a difference. So for ENEG, as an example, electrus nickel immersion gold, it's actually the difference in conductivity at the corners. And at the corners is where there's a high current density and a high electric field intensity. So it's really a corner effect for a microstrip transmission line. In the case of a strip line transmission line, that's different. Actually, strip line in a cross-sectional view is really ground signal ground, and all the fields are condensed and contained within the structure, and the plated finish is actually applied in the outer plane, so it really has no effect. And then in the case of ground to coplanar waveguide, that actually can have more losses and norm normally does have more losses than a microstrip transmission line. So let me show you an illustration now that explains that. The drawings shown here are cross-sectional views of two different circuits. The circuits in the upper left is a microstrip transmission line circuit. The circuit on the right is a ground to coplanar circuit. And as I already mentioned, the microstrip circuit is affected by an edge effect where the conductor meets the surface and there is a high current density at that edge. So when there's plated finishes applied to the circuit, it's really the edge effect that is uh, making a difference in conductor losses for the microstrip. However, in the ground to coplanar waveguide design, it's actually different than that because on the signal layer, there's a neighboring ground planes, so it's a ground signal ground configuration, and there are uh, effects of the electric fields coupled between the signal and the neighboring ground planes. And those uh, conductor walls that are the ground signal ground actually do have the plated finish on them, so it now has four layers of the final plated finish as compared to the microstrip circuit that just has two layers. The charts shown here are actually insertion loss charts, and the chart on the left is for a microstrip transmission line, the chart on the right is for a ground and coplanar transmission line. And the difference is the circuits are using uh, bare copper as compared to ENIG. ENIG is electrus nickel immersion gold. And the other thing is the material that these circuits are using are the exact same material. It is 8 mil thick RO4003C. And uh, the only difference is really the design. So the chart on the left is showing microstrip transmission lines. The red curve is bare copper. Blue curve is with the ENIG finish applied. And you can see there's a difference of insertion loss at 50 gigahertz of about 0.5 dB per inch. Now in the case of the ground coplanar waveguide using the exact same materials, and it is a 50 ohm transmission line, the difference between bare copper insertion loss at 50 gigahertz red curve and the blue curve ENIG at 50 gigahertz, there's a difference of 1.2 dB per inch. So it's obvious that the ground coplanar waveguide circuit has much more effect or is more affected by the more lossy finish ENIG than the microstrip transmission line. About two years ago, we did a study with uh, some joint efforts with Enthone, which is now McDermott, and what we did was evaluate several different final plated finishes on the same test vehicle. And we put a lot of thought into the test vehicle to make sure it was optimum to really tell the differences in good high resolution uh, differences of these different final plated finishes. And the reason we did that is we know that the final plated finishes do have an Im impact on conductor losses. So what we did for the test vehicle is we chose a test vehicle that would exaggerate the conductor losses, but also the test vehicle would be very consistent from one circuit to another for its own conductor losses. So really what we did was we used a 5 mil thick RT Duroid 6002 laminate with rolled copper, which is very smooth, and also this material has very low losses, so the dissipation factor is 0 0.0012. So having a low dissipation factor means that the dielectric losses are minimized and you're going to exaggerate more the conductor losses. Having very smooth copper, rolled copper, that means that the conductor losses due to copper surface roughness is minimized and the variation that you can see from one lot of copper to another lot of copper is minimal when you have very smooth copper like rolled copper. And then of course the 5 mil thickness is very thin and that can uh, also exaggerate the conductor effects. So this combination is making for the perfect test vehicle really to look at differences in the conductor effects due to the final plated finish. The chart shown here is a summary of the output of this study. And what it's showing is the bare copper circuits is the light blue curve, and that is the reference. And then you can see the differences in insertion loss with these other circuits that were using the exact same test vehicle, but were uh, plated with a different final plated finish. So let's walk through this quickly. To begin with, I have uh, in the same grouping three different blue curves, and I did that purposely because that's really saying that all three of these behave the same. One of those is the reference circuit, and that's the light blue curve. And then the other curve that's a little darker blue, that's OSP, that stands for Organic Solderability Preservative, and then Immersion 10 is the other one. And they're all three blue curves, and I did that purposely again, really because I'm saying that they really have no performance difference. All three of these perform the same. 
So MERS and Silver Relief makes no difference for the insertion loss. Same with OSB. And then uh, I also showed solder mask, which is a brown curve in this uh, slide. And the uh, solder mask is actually not a metal finish. It's actually a dielectric that's added to the circuit. But I wanted to put that in here for reference so you can compare the effects of solder mask, which is sometimes an option to using some of these final plated finishes. And then immersion 10, the green curve, that's what's used most often at millimeter wave frequencies. Yellow curve is any pig, and then red curve is ENIG. ENIG is used a lot in the industry. It is a very good plated finish. However, it does cause more losses, and as long as the engineer and the designer is aware that the final plated finishes are going to cause more losses due to ENIG, then that's fine. That now concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.